evening, everybody. Uh, it's been an honor and pleasure to talk to my colleagues in Rajkot Ophthalmic Society. My journey in ophthalmology began almost uh, 40 years back. Uh, my early days, like uh, most of us, were uh, quite carefree and fun filled. Studies were secondary. During my diploma days, two stalwarts in ophthalmology visited Nagpur. This visit ignited the fire within me. Two stalwarts were Dr. P. N. Nagpal and Dr. Katrina. They opened a new world to us. And we realized that modernization had just started. Uh, in Nagpur, I had the uh, privilege of working with Dr. Professor S.K. Dhawan, who was an EJI alumni, and he was a very dynamic and a very skillful surgeon who respected hard work from anybody. Just emulating him changed me for the better. The, the dynamic nature of his can be told, and the amount of hard work that he used to put in was, in those days, we used to conduct camps, eye camps. And in 90 days, we did 140 camps. So you can imagine we used to operate at one place in the morning and by night reach the other place where we have completed the diagnostics and then operate the whole night. So he was a great influence. After uh, working in Nagpur till, till 83, I realized that I didn't have much to learn there. And so I wanted to uh, join Dr. Nagpal but the, he had a long waiting list. So ultimately I came to Chikodra, I pestered him and ultimately got my fellowship entry in 1985. Fellowship with Dr. Akpal was a life-changing experience. All of us and many of us have experienced it. Fellowship exposed me to excellence in retinal surgery and with a human touch. Uh, the whole approach to life and his philosophy of life and the way he saw it, he made me a better human being. After finishing fellowship, I came back to the trust hospital where I was working and realized that the facilities available were inadequate. And the whole purpose of starting practice was to develop state-of-the-art hospital and make it in a manner that that we can see the patients in great details and give them the best facility. But it's very important that you develop your skills. Now, the process of skill development is always slow. There is too much of self-learning involved. Like we learned our FACO ourselves, our vitreous surgery ourselves, our lasers also ourselves. Because my time in Retina Foundation was uh, in the early stage when we didn't have even a laser. So what I realized that if I attend a large number of national and international conferences, it may possibly help me. So the first jump I took was attending the World Congress in Singapore in 1990. And of course, guidance from teachers and colleagues helped. I started my hospital in a small dilapidated house, which was renovated by my good friend, Asubai Zoshi. And we started in 1988. Sir was kind enough to inaugurate the same. So this is how Badre Eye Care Center started. And uh, this is with, with boss, my mentor, guide, friend, philosopher, everything. And that time it struck me that if Sir is holding your hand, then nothing is impossible. Yeah, so I always believe that when God is my partner, all things are possible. So from the very beginning, I made God my partner so that you don't do wrong things. During our initial practice, there were uh, demands from uh, different places to do eye camps. So one of the um, uh, social group 
invited me to Gondrel. I, I requested them that they must create an air conditioned operation theater there, and then only I'll come and operate. So we did about 40 cases there in, in two days, and that was an IOL camp. So we did extra capsular with IOLs. And I still remember Dr. Vijay Maheshwari was a, a medical officer in civil, and he came to inspect the camp, whether the facilities were up to the mark or not. Similarly, I went to Dharampur. It's a place in Valsad district where uh, Vanvasi Kalyan uh, Ash Parishad, they have a boys hostel in uh, Sidumba. And said they wanted in the tribal area to hold a camp. So I went there, saw patients the whole day, operated the next day. And this was the team of volunteers and workers. And uh, it was generally uh, very satisfying and uh, enjoyable. Uh, it was always a challenge to improve your abilities. And trying to excel in the profession, I realized, was appreciated by the society. You know, you kept on buying new instruments. If everything was lacking, we got our loans and got it at our place. So the whole purpose was that the facility should be available. It was appreciated by the society and people did like it. In the process, unknowingly, it created an atmosphere of healthy competition. My junior colleagues and uh, even people in the trust hospitals felt that they must do something similar or maybe better than that. It helped everyone, including the trust hospitals. Uh, the particular hospital where I was working was small and the facilities were inadequate. The infrastructure has had its limitations. So we shifted to this new place in 1995. We created a small hospital. The place was small, but my actual requirements were too many. And my architect had to sit on the plan for 10 months before he could come out with something like this. As, as requested, sir was kind of enough again to come and inaugurate the hospital. Here, sir is with uh, us and uh, my mother who attended the inauguration. The same day, we had a CME in the, in the basement. We had a makeshift auditorium that was still not complete. And uh, Dr. Nagpal gave a lucid talk on the advances in vitro retinal surgery. You can see from the, from the window of this tool, uh, Dr. Chetan Hindocha, who was a, a fellow of SIR uh, during that time. And he also spoke very nicely on the, I, I believe, on phototoxicity. In 2001, uh, Dr. Balda, C.R. Balda was installed as the president of the Gujarat Ophthalmic Society. And we decided to organize the meeting in Rajkot. I was the organizing secretary of the conference. You can see uh, she respected Sundar Singh Bandari was the governor of, uh, uh, of Gujarat then. And uh, he was kind enough to be the chief guest. And uh, you can see Rekha Ben Gosalia was supporting um, all our endeavors and was with us. Uh, Jitatmananji uh, was uh, the chief of uh, Ramkrishna Ashram in Rajkot, and I happened to be closely associated with him. And in the process, we started Vivekananda Center almost. I think 15, 20 years back. And now it has uh, flourished into a very big hospital doing large amount of work. Vitatmananji had great influence on me. Dr. Vilas BDA was then the outgoing president of Gujarat of Tamil Society. Uh, Dr. Vasawada was one of, the, uh, one of the speakers in one of the sessions. As we all know, he is an inspiring figure 
for all of us that last 30 years. The revolutions in the techniques and technology was happening at a very rapid space, pace. Uh, like in, intracapsular to extracapsular to FACO, all this uh, happened in a period of uh, less than 10 years. And the same was true about modern vitrectomy and the additional procedures. It was in the 90s that most of the things happened. We tried to keep pace with the modern times. Uh, this was, of course, not uh, very, uh, not very much in the past. You can see on the left side, it was 2005. We got this status OCT, the time domain OCT, and the, the the type of picture that we got. But we were happy even with this. We could diagnose a lot of uh, uh, vitreo macular uh, problems, uh, macular diseases, even in the depths of the. Uh, retinal layers, uh, but then a lot of changes occurred, and and we got this to, in 2015. We got this DRI OCT Triton, which was the first uh, swept source OCT, and you can see the the amount of change that occurred in in the in the in the pictures that you could see. You could see the vitreous, you see the inner layer, the posterior layer of the posterior vitreous, you could see the vitreoretinal attachments or traction, you could see a full thickness macular hole, you could see cysts in the inner vitreous layers, and you can go much beyond because it has great penetration and so you could measure the thickness of the choroid and a uh, lot of other things. So this was a major change that occurred during that time. This is the setup of our uh, DRI OCT Triton. It had another additional feature apart from having angiography, color fundus photograph, autofluorescence, it also had OCT angio. And in the depths of the depths of the lesions, you could actually make out the, the, the capillary network in the neovascular membranes. This was before treatment, this was after treatment, it is slowly shrinking. So this was another revelation to us. This is especially useful in ischemic maculopathy when there are, the visual loss is disproportionate. Now here you are able to very clearly make out capillary non-perfusion areas and dropout areas. So it, it helped in, in diagnosing and it helps in, in the prognosticating and in the follow-up process. And you're able to come to the understanding of what is the end point of the treatment. This was another uh, development uh, which occurred. Initially, when we were with Dr. Nagpal, there was xenon photocoagulator. Then when I started practice, I got argon laser photocoagulator. And then we got the diode laser red and then green. And then ultimately, we got this uh, multi-spot laser, the Pascal multi-spot laser. And uh, it changed. Uh, a lot of things, especially the, the pan-retinal photocoagulation treatment after doing for many years becomes extremely boring and monotonous job. And because of this multi-spot uh, uh, ability, the treatment became quick and it became so controlled. You can see the spots, the spacing and the amount of coverage that you can get. So, this has improved uh, PRP treatment and so many times you can complete the treatment if patient is from far off place in, in one day, maybe in the morning and evening and you can finish the treatment. And uh, so, so that is it. Another important landmark was the uh, All Gujarat Ophthalmic Society Conference in 2013, where I was um, chosen and installed as the president of the Gujarat of Tamil Society. It was a great honor. It is a, a ceremonial post. You don't have to do, do much about it, but it is an appreciation of the efforts and the work you have done in the society. Dr. Mukesh Purwal, our president, was the organizing secretary of this conference and he did a wonderful, wonderful job. He is, is a great planner. I 
the exhibition is perfect. We were we were lucky to have this teacher, Professor G. Uh, Lai from Belgium, with whom he had done his ICO fellowship. And uh, he had come all the way from Belgium to attend this meeting. Dr. Piyush Unadkar was also part of the organizing committee and uh, they did a wonderful job. Now I'll go to some of the videos which we have archived and um, please uh, bear with us because uh, since they have been archived from, from the VHS, so there would be some, some wind does not. My journey has seen by the microscope. So time is changed. We measure its passage by how much things alter. This is the era of intracapsular cataract extraction by, which we used to do by cryo. I still have this opossum is cryo with me because sometimes you still need to do an intracapsular cataract surgery in very hard black cataracts or in subluxated cataracts. Then came the era of extracapsular cataract surgery which we started doing in 1985. And I think by 86, we had started uh, doing uh, I think by 86, we had started doing the anterior chamber IOLs. So the, the incisions in, and when we shifted to FACO, incisions changed, the scleral tunnel incision, that was the frown incision, then the three plane incisions, and then uh, the clear corneal incision that you see in the, in the present times. The machines also change with the times. First, initially we had this Protege, a Venturi uh, system with FACO emulsifier. Then we had the Legacy, the Infinity, and then ultimately the Centurion. This was the basic uh, vitrectomy machine that we had uh, made by Rajan Electronics and uh, it was very basic but we were able to do um, a simple vitrectomies but unfortunately the detachment rate was very high. The moment we got to get this DAISY that is a digital aspiration irrigation system uh, it was a, a little better the cutting rate was, I think, uh, about 1,000 cuts a minute, and we were able to control the vacuum. And this also had a very big uh, FACO handpiece, where you could you would need an incision of about 3.5 millimeters to introduce the FACO handpiece, and it had fixed power and fixed vacuum. And in spite of that, because we were prepared otherwise for FACO, like when we were doing capsular axis, we were doing hydrodissection. And so we were able to use this successfully for doing FACO emulsification. And in a month's time, when there was a dilemma whether we should do extra capsular or FACO, in a one eyed patient, I chose to do FACO emulsification. And that was the point where I decided that I must have a FACO machine. So this helped me. Uh, in converting to uh, getting a FACO machine. Then we had Accurus, now we have Constellation. These machines are fabulous. And then of course the Catalyst and uh, now the Wavelength. The IOLs also changed over a period of time. Initially we had this anterior chamber IOL. This IOL I had implanted 35 years back and I think still has good vision. But, but there were problems with these four loop lenses and uh, AC IOLs were creating, creating havoc. So in a very short period, we shifted to PC IOLs. The PC IOLs initially also had holes which created problems, but then the new PC IOLs came with either uh, a 
a C loop or a modified C loop. And since the lens was implanted through a large scleral tunnel, you had to uh, modify your technique to put it in the bag. Then we got this hydrophilic acrylic lens. This was a three-dope tailed IOL, which was uh, which was implanted in the bag with a with a forceps. The hydrophilic lenses had only one problem, and that was it: the posterior capsule opacification was very fast and is almost seen in fifty percent of cases. Then came the acrisol, the modified acrylic material, uh, which was patented by Alcon. And then it came with a blue blocking IOL. But uh, it changed the scenario in two ways. One, it decreased the inflammation tremendously. And secondly, the PCO rate went down significantly. And then came the bifocals and then the trifocals. So the IOLs also have seen tremendous amount of change. Faco emulsification techniques also changed for a period of time. But one technique which remained and is still relevant is the divide and conquer technique, which was described by Gimbel. If anybody, a starter, wants to do Faco, learn Faco, he must master divide and conquer because it is applicable in all types of cataracts. Over the years, our films went places. In the sense, we are fond of making um, video films. That time, it used to take a lot of time editing a video film. For an eight-minute film, we used to spend four hours in the, in the studio. But still, the end result was quite satisfying. So we made our videos and presented it in uh, different conferences all over the country, either in the All India meetings or any of the uh, intraocular lens implant conferences. Apart from doing uh, different types of phaco emulsification and techniques, uh, anesthesia was also undergoing tremendous change. This is just an example of, of the femto laser technique that right now we do, where the nucleotomies are done and therefore uh, separating the nucleus pieces is, is very easy and so the handling is is minimal and right now i'm enjoying uh, the the precision and the perfection that i get with uh, the femto laser technique and and patients are also appreciating the the value of it We also did a lot of work, vitreoretinal work, and presented our, our uh, experiences. This is one film where we showed a triple procedure for management of intraocular foreign bodies. So, phaco emulsification or cataract extraction with IOL, with vitrectomy, with intraocular foreign body removal was done. Traumatic cataract management was also changed because initially it was scan openers and we tried to do rexes in these patients and then posterior rexis and try to do, if the rexis, anterior rexis was not intact, we would capture the optics of, of the lens in the posterior capsule so that the centering was perfect. Then visualization system was, was a problem in vitrectomy and uh, we were using the contact system and uh, the microscope had a peculiar problem that the magnification used to be very high that you get on the video film. And therefore, making a good vitreous surgery film was, was a challenge. But still, we actually in 2001, we made a nice film on macular hole surgery, which won uh, an award in the PGOS. Anesthesia also, was changing from retrobulbar to peribulbar. And then we introduced the Greenbaum's anesthesia cannula, 
and me and Dr. Chetan Hindoja had presented uh, a poster in the SAC conference in Ahmedabad, which was well appreciated. This particular cannula is, is non-traumatic and it, it goes, two cc's of anesthetic agent is required and that, you know, causes complete anesthesia and a significant okinesia also. And we called it the transition anesthesia. When people have to shift from peribulbar to topical, this becomes a transitional anesthesia. We removed a lot of uh, foreign bodies and some of them were really challenging. This is a glass piece which was, re which was stuck in the retina and which was ultimately removed through the limbal root. There are a lot of effort involved, but it was quite uh, rewarding. There was this handshake technique for intraocular foreign body removal where you don't use a magnet, but use your forcep to remove it. This was another technique that uh, we actually practiced uh, in late 90s, where a sclerotomy was done and the choroid was exposed. And the, and the laser probe, the endo laser probe was used to puncture the choroid and to get the, and cause SRF drainage. So sometimes the choroid will only cauterize sort of the choroid and choroid begins to become thin or there was a small opening and just a needle is used to drain it. We realized that the biggest advantage of a particular procedure was that it caused less uh, subretinal bleed. We were handling a lot of trauma cases and this is a typical black ball hyphema with raised intraocular pressure and a large blood clot was sitting in the anterior chamber. So we used the anterior chamber maintainer. There was a phase when we were using anterior chamber maintainer even for phaco emulsification, especially in posterior polar cataract, so that there is no flattening of the anterior chamber. In between, there came a phase when people started doing piggyback IOLs in high hypermetropia because lenses beyond 30 diopters were not available. So if the lens required is say 40 or 45, then two lenses were implanted one over the other in the bag, of course. For that, you needed to have a, a smaller capsulorexis and you have to see to it that, that both, the, both the optics are in the bag so that they are in snug contact with each other. Now, this was done initially with PMMA lenses and then with the foldable lenses, depending on the affordability of the patient. After almost a year's follow, it was realized that uh, there was opacification in between the two lenses. So there was a membrane formed in between and you have to do YAG lasers for that which could sometimes damage the posterior lens of the two. And uh, slowly, therefore, it remained for a year or two and it went to, to disrepute because, um, because there were problems with this particular, except for the opacification, of course, there was no problem. So we did that too in almost five or six cases. And then, of course, the era of, uh, you know, availability of uh, higher diopter lenses and customized lenses came. And so this particular procedure was abandoned. Posterior capsule opacification was a frequent phenomenon in high myopes because in those days in high myopes, we were not implanting intraocular lens because there was a concern about, uh, you know, doing a posterior capsulotomy and then having detachment. So that's the reason posterior capsule opacification it was polished, also were removed. And sometimes we had to do it two or three times to keep the integrity of the posterior capsule. But then after some time that also changed 
as we started using low power IOLs in these patients. Congenital cataract has always been a subject of my interest. And since the time uh, uh, Dr. Gimbal came out with the idea of posterior capsulorexis, here you can see that posterior capsulorexis has been initiated. And uh, it, it is almost one eighth the thickness as the anterior capsule. And it has to be much smaller than the anterior capsulorexis. Uh, the biggest advantage of this was that we were able to capture the IOL in the posterior capsulorexis. And so centering of the lens, which was a issue, uh, there was a delayed decentering of IOLs in congenital cataract that was taken care of. And it was thought that it would prevent uh, posterior capsule opacification. But that didn't happen. The, the membranes formed in front of the anterior vitreous phase, but the centering was, was very good in these patients. We encountered different types of congenital cataracts. Somewhere like this plaque, which you can see is sitting on the, on the posterior capsule. Initially, you would feel that the posterior capsule is opaque, and therefore there was a tendency to to either leave it or, or remove it in a manner that the posterior capsule got torn. So you have to basically remove all the side attachments, but you could always see a stock below and uh, that sometimes you have to cut with a vena scissor and so the rest of the posterior capsule was, if you try to pull it, the whole posterior capsule would get torn. So you just remove it and then you can convert it, this particular small opening into a posterior capsule with excess. And sometimes you got a, a fibrotic cataract, congenital cataract. So there was only fibrotic anterior capsule and few remnants of uh, the cortex and the posterior capsule. So just doing an anterior capsule or excess would also solve the problem. But our surgical journey was filled with adventures and some, you know, premature uh, misadventures. This is just an example. This was a patient who had undergone multiple keratoplasties, had undergone cataract surgery, and who came with to us and uh, all the conjunctiva the cornea was conjunctivalized to the complete stem cell. Stem cell loss. And so we decided to do a keratoprosthesis. In that era, this must be in the early 90s, I think only Madhu Instruments was making this particular type of keratoprosthesis. So we explained everything to the patient and uh, luckily for us, we agreed. Patient had come from Jamshedpur. I think many people had rejected uh, his uh, request. And since patient had good uh, PL and PR in all four quadrants, we went ahead. And uh, this was an adventure and, and, and a not very well thought of adventure because before doing this keratoblastosis, I had done only one keratoplasty. I'm not a corneal surgeon and it's not never trained as one. But just to help the patient, we decided to do this. And uh, as uh, luck would have it, uh, the patient had almost uh, three meters vision. And uh, he went back to Jamshedpur. But then we lost him to follow up. So that is a small video bouquet and uh, you may go back to the slides, please. Yes. Allow me to stop share for a moment. Uh -huh. I hope I'm not exceeding my time. No, sir. Uh, we are enthralled with uh, your surgical hands. You can continue as much as you want. Uh, no another 10, 15 minutes. Sure.
as, as I was mentioning, the trauma management was uh, one of the things which we uh, very seriously took. During that particular era, trauma cases were referred to Amdava, either because they were poor prognosis cases or patients were not very affording. Our ability to manage both anterior and posterior segment problems helped in stopping this trend. And this particular uh, fascination for managing trauma continues. All complex trauma cases were tackled with uh, acceptable results. Congenital cataract was another area where um, I realized that early when we started doing congenital cataract in the 80s, the management was pathetic with dismal results. With the advent of modern techniques like anterior capsule, capsule anterior vitrectomy, Helon GV, foldable IOLs, the results improved. Surgery became consistent, predictable, and rewarding. Aggressive amblyopia therapy added to the success. But here is a caveat. Congenital cataract should be managed only when you are able to do good cataract surgery in adults. Because if you are doing excessive handling in these eyes, then you are you are you have to get ready for disaster. So be very gentle with these eyes. Glaucoma is another area which, which interests me. It is a mysterious disease. We all agree. Solving the puzzle is always a challenge. Since my thesis was on gonioscopy during my MS, this gave me a head start by demystifying the gonioscopy technique and adding to my skill set. In 90s, patients came in advanced stage of glaucoma and were not compliant to medical therapy. Trabeculectomy was a major side saver. Over the years, trabeculectomy has been modified, resulting in more controlled and modifiable results. Releasable sutures, timely massage, and use of mitomycin C in a judicious manner help improve results. But never forget that glaucoma stays with the patient lifelong and hence needs lifelong follow-up. So I many times jokingly say that it is like an ungrateful mistress. But like the joys of life, there are some regrets. When I look back, if I have to change something, then I would give more, enough more attention to my physical fitness. After a particular stage in my career, I had some physical problems which actually dampened my enthusiasm a little and made me a little cautious. So I couldn't go full steam on a lot of things. Like I could not do enough charity work. I could not do enough teaching. In fact, Dr. Nakpal was kind enough to appoint me, appoint me as an honorary in uh, medical college, uh, Rajkot. But I was not able to go to the hospital and take classes. And I have my surgical limitations. Tried to could not. I, I tried uh, desperately, but could not master certain surgical procedures like viscocanalostomy. When I saw Robert Stegman, uh, I heard I took a course in San Diego for three hours, and the, the way he showed results in African children, I was mesmerized. But I tried, but I couldn't give very consistent uh, results every time. Macular translocation was another area which we tried, but we couldn't because of different reasons. Uh, back in the IOL implantation is another very fascinating area in, in congenital cataracts. But uh, Mary Tassinon, she has described and she does it, but I have not been able to do it because of the unavailability of these lenses. So now coming to the pleasant part of this presentation, first and foremost, my better half Madhuri for her support through thick and thin. She tolerated my irregular long hours, my financial tensions, sacrificed her career to take care of my lovely daughters, made no demands and made my happiness hers. 
thanks a million to her. Cannot thank enough my patients for giving me access to good education. Sorry, I cannot thank enough my parents for giving me access to good education and inculcating the right values which still guide me. My huge thanks to my philosopher and guide, Sri Bhaskar Rao Damle and Sri Asubai Zoshi, who helped me in all walks of life. They were like pillar of strength for me. And any idea that came to my mind, they helped me in realizing it. I'm extremely thankful to Dr. Asmuk Dhruv, Dr. Kishore Doshi, Dr. Bharat Mehta, Dr. C.R. Balda, Dr. Rekha Ben Gosalia, Dr. Sudha Ben Patni, Dr. Kamlesh Vasauda, Dr. Himendra Mehta, Dr. P.V. Doshi, Dr. Vilas Sate, and good, my good friends in the Rajkota Ophthalmic Society, like Dr. Dilip Agrawa, Dr. Manoj Bhatt, Dr. Bharat Shah, Dr. Raju Kothari, Dr. Chetan Indocha, Nitesh Vorwar, and many others. I'm sorry if I am unable to take their names. It is just because of lack of time. And working with them and, and sharing my experiences with them has made my journey enjoyable. Last but not the least, my nice, loyal patients who made me realize my dreams. This is a, a, a photograph of my friend, Dr. Vilas Sathe and Dr. Ratan Purvari. Dr. Sathe and me grew up together in uh, vitreoretinal retinal surgery and we almost attend all conferences together, nationally and internationally. And so attending a conference was one part, but out of the conference hall was, was more enjoyable. And we always look forward to that. So special thanks to him as well. And I think uh, simultaneously we were making slides, me, my own slides and Devi and Nihar's. And uh, in my slide, I had mentioned that this particular presentation would not have been possible without the help and support of Dr. Deviani and Dr. Dhruv. Uh, so if if you have liked the presentation, 50% share goes to them. The material is mine. The, the assembling is theirs. So in the end, uh, let me thank you, ROS, for honoring me today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a very mesmerizing presentation both parts, the journey in ophthalmology and your surgical videos, you showed uh, a lot of uh, snippets of cataract surgery, VR surgery, glaucoma and uh, trauma, uh, true all-rounder uh, in ophthalmology. Very few uh, are left uh, with these capabilities. And what I was very impressed uh, with was that uh, you humbly acknowledged what you could not do or what you thought you could not do. That is uh, so great coming from a person of your stature. Uh, for us, what we have seen over the years, uh, Dr. Gadre remains the final word in ophthalmology, at least in Rajput. That is how we look at you. And it is our honor and pleasure. You don't have to thank us for anything. The pleasure is entirely of Rajkot Ophthalmic Society, personally mine, and uh, everyone in ROS will agree to that. Congratulations, sir. And thank you very much for teaching us, for telling us your story, and guiding us in innumerable ways. I would now invite others to make their comments. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, ask him some questions uh, which uh, would help us all. Hello. Yes, uh, Dr. Uh, please. Uh, good evening, Dr. Gadre. Congratulations. Thank you. 
I, I, I know Dr. Gadre from last, I think 35 years, 36 years. He has been consistent. He is, he, he is a lovely person. He is a versatile person, versatile personality. जो मैंने देखा है अभी तक देखा है एक इतना अच्छा आदमी देखने को आपको कम मिलेगा अपनी ऑफथलमिक सोसाइटी वट एवर अवर ऑफथलमिक सोसाइटी इज टूडे इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ बिग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम डॉक्टर गदरे माई ऑल रिस्पेक्ट एंड रिगार्ड्स टू डॉक्टर गदरे एंड इज फैमिली आई रियली सिंसियरली विश इम ऑल द वेरी बेस्ट फॉर इज फ्यूचर थैंक यू थैंक यू अग्रवाल साहब क्या बोलो थैंक यू नहीं कुछ नथिंग नथिंग यू यू हैव टू से नथिंग यू यू हैव डन ट्रिमेंडस जॉब इन ऑफथलमोलॉजी टुडे ऑफथलमोलॉजी इन गुजरात नहीं इन गुजरात में फ्रेंकली आई एम टेलिंग यू इफ गुजरात इफ राजकोट ऑफथलमिंग सोसाइटी इज नोन इज नोन बिकॉज ऑफ यू एंड इन नेशनल लेवल इफ समबडी नोज एनी ऑफथलमोलॉजी फ्रॉम राजकोट इज फर्स्ट इज यू एंड देन अदर अदर डॉक्टर कम्स सो यू हैव मेड अस प्राउड यू हैव मेड अस वेरी प्राउड एंड राजकोट ऑफ थर्मिंग सोसाइटी शुड बी थैंकफुल टू यू माई रियल सिंसियर रिस्पेक्ट टू यू मिसेस गदरे एंड योर होल फैमिली एंड ही इज ऑलवेज फर्स्ट ऑफ द ब्लॉक्स इन एनी अडोप्टिंग एनी न्यू मशीन न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी and he has an international outlook no nee, no nee, and he he is versatile person versatile skill just see the skill in every field in every field of ophthalmology mein whatever whatever surgery you say he is able to do it very very few doctors are doing all the surgeries very few doctors i i don't i i hardly know any doctor who is doing all the surgeries retina bolo to retina cataract bolo to cataract fake bolo to lasik bolo to lasik everything is doing So that is tremendous. That is remarkable. That's it. I'm not doing. No, no. Party, party. Chai hai na. Isliye bol raha hu. Party to me. No, no, no. No, we really respect you. You, you, you have done tremendous work. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir, Doctor Kalariya, sir. Uh, Good evening. Uh, many congratulations to Doctor Gadriya, sir, and his family. Uh, actually we are blessed that uh, honor is being ours that we are uh, giving honor to from ros uh, thank you sir words cannot suffice uh, what i could say about sir but i started my career with dr gadre i was with him for a, a short fellowship but i re- remembered each and everything uh, what i could say that he is a great uh, surgeon dedicated surgeon dedicated academician he always lo- uh, love to teach others so that uh, he could up bring the society as a whole i know they everyone knows that sir has started a, uh, a case presentation at his place also offering a, a breakfast and everything <laughs> at his expense but sir has started that thing it was so nice of him he always encourage each and every one uh, always uh, in every meeting he always used to ask me that what are you doing new each and every time but then after i think after some years he has lost hope that he will he will not do nothing new <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no but still let, let me let me comment actually uh, kamlesh i am sorry i had made a slide where i had uh, acknowledged uh, your and people like you who worked with me like dr meetesh kokani dr anurag thakral dr himal kansagra and and dr gareja and dr gunja hadiya made a slide but somehow there was a mix up and we, we missed that slide but but i am sorry i didn't acknowledge your uh, your nee, help nee. many of the video films that were made were actually because of kamlesh help because he used to write on the video cassette as to what surgeries were done in, in his nice uh, handwriting and then i would take it to the studio and then edit it and all so thank you kamlesh no sir thank you uh, one thing i would like to share it that, that one thing sir told me when i was his fellow that when you take up the chair for surgery you see nothing you should uh, have in mind only accept patient whatever the time is take you have you could have the patience you could do best 
any expense you get at that time i know vitectomy sir was doing there were main may, patient may come for rrd sir used to take so much time he used one ca do pfcl gas exchange then silicon oil then pfs i used to think that there is so much expense and sir is not charging anything but i i could not explain that thing and sir has never never ever think of think of money while doing surgery i was a student i was i know at that time also sir never used to talk about money sir thank you very much you are the great pioneer for saurashtra and kutch we always had a image of something like guru in ophthalmology and that is because of you and you have contributed so many to patients of saurashtra that they have not been gone to amdavad that are the blessings from patients that you have got and we thank you in your life that your kids are also uh, uh, top and uh, good in academics and everything and uh, best of your health for your and for your family that you could guide us throughout the whole our life thank you sir thank you thank you kamlesh thank you so sweet of you i would like you to comment uh, on one or two things sir uh, as a surprise element on this photograph <laughs> this was i think the day of inauguration and i was i just got a congratulatory call from somebody it, i think it was my brother from uh, my four brothers were in the army so okay. they were at different places and i think only one was able to come so it was a congratulatory phone from my brother nice nice many years down the line and uh, it's 25 27 years back 27 years back yeah. and you didn't speak much about this sir yeah <laughs> actually there were two instruments which i actually designed this is this is my favorite and i was actually uh, trying to tell these people that we, we should retrieve one of the videos and uh, show it it's a wonderful uh, device when the pupil get small during phaco emulsification and you have to retract the iris as well as you know you don't have a third hand so the irrigation continues and you retract the iris and then do irrigation aspiration so that is that is a very very useful tool because at that moment it is it is not possible to put iris hooks because you have already done rexes the eye is there you might damage the rexes and this particular thing it, it actually is helpful even when uh, your rexes is not complete and it has gone underneath underneath the iris you can use this start irrigation and with a needle go from the other hand and then complete your rexes so this particular device i have been using i think it is it is called gadre irrigating uh, retractor yes sir and this was made by epsilon very that nicely another, designed yes sir yeah yeah now it works beautifully if, if anybody is interested i can i can send him complimentary sure sir uh, and uh, there was another instrument actually uh, made for you know deciding the size of the capsular axis because we tend to get a little casual about a capsular axis and though therefore it doesn't remain central and circular so i have made a made an instrument where you make only four points four marks on, on the cornea and I, i say that you join the dots and in the process what happens is you get a 5 mm axis in the center because one is in this particular euphoria that you are able to do the axis completely he doesn't realize that how big it is or where it is going it is only after a few years that you realize that your lens is not in the center your after cataract rate is high it's all because your axis is not central and circular so that's another instrument that we have and we use it every day whenever we are not doing femto the first thing we do is a mark on the cornea and then start our rexes yes there's a very useful tip coming from years and years of experience uh, definitely all the people uh, joining uh, the surgery is new would uh, uh do well to take uh, these tips yeah, they should mark the mark the rexis uh, size on the cornea yes sir uh i invite uh, dr devyani to speak a few words 
because she is both an ophthalmologist and uh, sir's daughter uh, and uh, i want to know her perspective uh sorry i am sharing the screen with sir sure sure because, uh, i was here as technical support yeah. i cannot be <laughs> technical support for anybody else because i'm quite challenged uh, otherwise uh, but this is a surprise uh, thank you so much for this opportunity sir uh i really don't have words while editing these uh, videos i myself have learned a lot uh, regarding the kind of patience and care you should take with the human eye uh, i've actually started i don't know it's borrowed confidence but uh, i feel just by editing these videos i learned uh, so much that it was very inspiring uh documentation is at an all time high in ophthalmology right now but uh, i think uh, we owe it to this generation of ophthalmologists for actually starting the trend and uh, he is uh, not only a pillar of support for us but uh, he has provided us an uh, a jump start into the world of ophthalmology uh, i would not be even 1% of the professional i am had i not seen it being done my entire life and uh, i will always be uh, a much better uh, person and ophthalmologist because uh, he is in front of me as a living example of the same thank you so much for giving me this opportunity sir my pleasure uh, devyani and uh, uh, many things we learn from him continuously every comment he makes every little changes he make uh, in his uh, surgeries in his uh, practice in his infrastructure is worth watching for example just the other day i saw that he has put up a chair lift for the patients uh, i know it is not uh, difficult to do that as such but to have the idea and imagination to uh, put it uh, in a existing setup and renovate it to their extent it also takes a lot of thinking and planning so always his surgeries and his uh, patient management is with a lot of consideration and thoughtfulness we appreciate that sir thank can you i, yeah, can i can i have know. a minute please yeah please go ahead yeah. uh honestly i'm too young to comment on somebody so great like him i i just want to thank him for everything he really means to me uh thanks to devyani i know him since my undergraduate days before i knew anything about ophthalmology then throughout the journey there are few things i'll never forget out of the so many things i learned from him uh, when i completed my post graduation and faco fellowship i was very happy that uh, i learned faco and i was sharing with him and his first comment was what next you know something like what if other figure would tell you that uh, it's not enough don't be happy about that so he always motivated me to learn something new something extra and he is the person who really guided me to go for a specialization which i did and which i feel have changed my life totally so without his guidance i would be definitely uh, not at a place where i am today and uh, i remember when i came to rajkot i had not even bought my 90d or 20d lenses he gave me a 60d lens uh, which he had a spare and when i bought mine i i was planning to return especially when devyani came but uh, i have not returned till date because i have kept it as a memory and best wishes uh, with the feelings he gave me i have kept it in my front drawer and uh, i feel it as a blessing to me from him and thank you sir thank you so much for everything and i am just one of the so many persons whom you have guided and you know made a better person from what we were Uh, both personally and professionally i am really privileged to know you thank you thank you so sweet of you thank you anyone else like uh, i think i would like to say a few words about dr gadre yes sir uh, everybody has said a lot and i agree with all of them i join my hands with them only one thing that he nobody has mentioned and uh, i would like to mention that uh, i was the chairman of the arun mathur uh, oration committee we invited dr gadre to for the arun mathur oration he just politely 
declined the invitation by saying only one sentence that I am doing only, only routine work. So I don't think I should go for uh, RN math operation. Now you have gone through the journey of uh, Dr. Ragadri, life's journey. It was not a life journey, it was the ophthalmic journey. So where was the ordinary thing he was doing? What was the routine thing he was doing? He was always doing something new, something new, something new. He was the best person to my mind to receive Dr. R. N. Mathuris and he politely <laughs> declined. This shows his humbleness. That is one thing. Second thing, everybody has said, and I also joined in with him, that there is always something to learn from him. I am being a senior person. Even in spite of that, I have turned a lot from him. I missed so many opportunities in my life to learn fecal, to learn retina work, to learn the reflective work. But because the student in me was perhaps not awake, and that's the reason I missed it. But he did everything. He went on learning everything. And he is a really comprehensive ophthalmic surgeon. And it is, he is an inspiration to all the youngsters, as well as seniors like me also. We do appreciate his work. And we do appreciate his dedication to ophthalmology. He is a living ophthalmologist. Ophthalmology. He is an ophthalmologist, but he is a living ophthalmology. He is an inspiration to all ophthalmic surgeons today and future also. My best wishes to him for the journey ahead. I am sure he will have a lovely life, and uh, I do appreciate Deviani and his family, I mean, their family. So my best wishes to all of them, and congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Bhatsab. Bhatsab available? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he's in the meeting. In the meeting. If you can hear us, sir. Probably uh, not. Yes, sir. Uh, it was really uh, fabulous to hear so much from you. And uh, I was frankly waiting for this day. To... No, I'm sorry, I delayed it too much. No, <laughs> no, no. Uh, you added uh, maybe uh, there is a sweetness in the waiting also. So that's good, sir. And uh, Dr. Suketu. Yes, first of all, congratulate, sir. Uh, I would like to congratulate, sir. Uh, I know him as a He's a very good family friend. And I can say that by seeing him, I feel like uh, taking ophthalmology. But once we entered ophthalmology, uh, I realized that it is very difficult to be a uh, Dr. Gadre, sir. It is uh, one kind of a generation person. And you cannot, uh, it takes lots of sacrifice, lots of dedication, and lots of hard work, uh, and lots of patience, which uh, everyone uh, doesn't have. I, I feel so. Um, so congratulations, uh, sir, and uh, I wish you a very good life ahead. Since uh, you will be working for more uh, more than ten or fifteen years, perhaps. But uh, whatever you do, I wish you a uh, lot more. Very, yeah, a lot more. Sir. I know he is not the one to uh, shock from work for uh, long. Uh, Definitely not. And we wish him to work for a long. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We we need him. In Rajkot ophthalmology forever. That is it. I, I know nothing <laughs> else. Definitely. No, that is okay, sir. That is our game. <laughs> so, uh, we don't complain about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, so, with this, we are going to uh, uh, end this meeting. Um, I would like I would like to thank our presenter, Dr. Balda sir and uh, Dr. Swati for uh, their presentation. And once again, uh, congratulate sir for uh, their beautiful presentation and lots of learning from him. So uh, uh, this is probably our last uh, online meet, and we are planning to have our uh, next ROA CME physical, and that will be on precision planning for cataract surgeries and videos of interesting cataract surgeries. Our guest speaker will be Dr. Girish Jetwar, sir. He has already agreed for the uh, meeting that will be on 13th March, uh, that is Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, with breakfast and lunch. So please block the date and grace the meeting. Thank you all for your presence.
thank you thank, thank you this. everyone it is uh, been a pleasure uh, doing this meeting uh, we would like to meet you all on the 13th of march uh, the more details will be sent to you soon and uh, we look forward to meeting after two years i think now uh, as a ros meeting yes thank you thank you thank you thank you